Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan, back for another Locked On Texas Tech special edition, wrapping up the week with voices from the YouTube comments. Appreciate those who are mixing it up in the comments section daily and uh, have plucked a couple of questions from the last couple of weeks to dive into today, Chris, and get your thoughts on. So let's get rolling with question number one. Now, this question regarding someone that we discussed on today's show, today being Friday, uh, if you have seen that episode, that being one Micah Hudson, we got to hear from this week. And this question from Roland50705 says, I know Micah Hudson will be used in many ways, but with his measurables, would you say he's geared more toward the outside or the slot? On Friday's show, Chris, and throughout the offseason, we've been talking about manufacturing touches and just finding ways to get the ball in his hands all over the field. That also included a conversation on Friday's show uh, regarding possibly being involved in the uh, return game as far as special teams are concerned. But as far as the measurables, how tall he is, what he's geared towards, do you think there is one mold he fits maybe a little bit better than the other, either on the outside or on the inside in the slot? Yeah, it's probably slot uh, if you were going to. But that that's the beauty of a guy like this is you don't want to paint him, you know, any one way. You want to you try to, again, create mismatches. and, and all that. But I think if, if you lean one way or the other, he's more of a natural slot. But the, what, what you need to do, and this is what Zach Kitley will – what his task will be is trying to get him the ball in space. And the reason why guys like this excel so much in the slot is typically they're, they're, you know, at I, I should say typically at times they're going to be matched up against the linebacker or, yeah. you know, uh, or passed off and, and, and maybe, you know, with covered by the, the third or fourth best corner, uh, you know, like a, a nickel guy or, or whatever it may be. Gotcha. And and I, I just think that's where he he would really excel because he's going to be, you would think, a lot better than who he's, you know, uh, up against. But I, I also just don't think that you want to, you know, label him and, 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 and typecast him into this or that. And that's why I think you want to give give the defense some different looks. Because I think I used this guy's name last year, and I don't know if like Josh Kelly or Micah Hudson are ever going to have this kind of speed. I mean, the guy just set the NFL combine for fastest time ever, and I hate to use an example of a Longhorn, but like Xavier Worthy was a kind of a utility guy, and I think he was moved around a lot, but he was so good that you had to – the defense just had to know where he was all the time. Okay, is he here? Is he there? And everything is adjusted accordingly. Now, that's also somebody that's like you're talking 4 2 four, three type guy. But the, the, the point I'm making here is that that was somebody that could turn nothing into something and sometimes was 60, 70 yards later. And, and, it, and it, it can flip a game, and it can win you a game. And that's what I think you're dealing with here a little bit with, with Josh and Micah. But uh, with, with, with Micah, yeah, I, I think he's more natural slot. But I, I don't think you want to typecast him and put him there only. Um, and, sure. and so that's the, the beauty of his ability to play make. Because he's going to be somebody, too, that's going to play bigger than he is. Hence the reason that I think that he can be outside because he's very physical. Um, and he's got gotcha. some, some, yeah, some of that uh, physicality to him, and he'll play bigger than he is. Um, I saw listed about, I think, six foot, 195, 200 pounds or so. Um, is there any, when, when you're as talented as he is, obviously, maybe it's not as much of a priority otherwise, but the strength and conditioning coach or nutritional staff is probably hearing that and saying, What are you kidding? You think we're not involved here? Uh, is there anything that they would like to see maybe? sort of tinkered with uh, size-wise? Does he need to add more weight or take him as he is and, and let's roll? Yeah, it's six foot 195. I think he's fine. I mean, yeah. I, I think, and again, it's it's really uh, not as much about adding weight. It's just being stronger. Because gotcha. because typically, this is the other reason why you guys have, have certain guys play in the slot. Typically, you get a lot of press coverage on the outside. And some guys can't, 
you know, they're not physical enough or strong enough to, to, you know, deal with that. And it, it, it bogs them down and they're just not, I mean, but you know, like you're, you're talking Josh Kelly and Koye and Caleb Douglas, which are all six, three, six, four. And it's all about hand placement all that. Well, Mike is, you know, again, he's not as tall, but he he's, certainly stout and i think that he can he is somebody that can you know handle that but in, in the slot now you know that's you know, he and like dre mccray or, or jordan brown or whoever you want to put in there that they are quick enough to where they're not going to get pressed uh and it and then you open up the middle of the field and you know it, it's just uh I, again the chess match i I'm, I'm fascinated to see there's that word again you know what what zach does with all those guys uh because there's so many possibilities and you can decoy some and kind of have everybody looking one way when you're really trying to focus on the other and you can kind of play that game several different ways. But, uh, but I, I don't think that from a measurable standpoint, unless it gets taller, I just don't see that you want to put too much more weight on him. It's just yeah. the strength component uh, being able to get off press coverage is really what, uh, but he, he's pretty thick now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think really strong, certainly for his age, uh, and time not yet spent in a uh, college strength and conditioning program. Is Mrs. Level or Ma and Pa Level getting on you about being fascinated? You're allowed to be fascinated, Chris. I just want to say for the record, you're allowed to be fascinated. <laughs> hey, and I wanted to ask you, and you maybe just kind of answered that question as far as the strength component, but what really makes, as far as a skill set, like maybe it's not so much measurables, like, hey, this guy is really tall, so he's great on the outside, or this guy isn't tall enough to be on the outside so he is on the inside what what skill set do you think really makes for an outside receiver or an inside receiver is it like some straight line speed versus uh agility side to side the strength thing you mentioned what what would you touch on first in some offenses it can be straight line speed and it's the ability to go high point of football because you, you you're not you know, you know, the fades, uh, the, the the things like that that require catch radius and and being able to go up and and get it. Uh, that that's certainly why you see more and more six two, six three, six four types uh, on the outside. You just you know, and with with a tight end, they typically are, are in tight, and then kind of it's it's going up against the linebacker if they're going out on a route. But you can also flex out a tight end and you know, create some problems there. But uh, I think straight line speed and, and just length uh, and allowing for a quarterback to just kind of throw the ball up a bit at times or, or when you get in the red zone, throw it up uh, in a fade. And But the straight line speed, I mean, that's why, you know, typically the the Z and the, and the X were always – are your outside spots in, in a lot of offenses in, in air raid, you know, lingo. And the yeah. Z – the, the, the Z and the X were a, a bit different. And, and depending on the scheme, you know, like your, your Z was Crabtree and Hicks and, and all that. Whereas your X was, was, and they would always, I think, line up on the left side of the field. I think I'm right there. Uh, don't, if I'm wrong, then I'm just, I'm, I'm opposite, but I think the Z always on the left, the X was always on, unless you were doing, you know, uh, trips or when you had three uh, or, or whatever it may be. But, they would they would basically say this guy's the more physical guy, uh, this you know more of our concepts and past concepts in the route tree or whatever. That this is going to send uh, the, the, this guy deeper, more and more go balls and more just down the field. Whereas this guy's going to be more over the middle and, and 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 all that. And so you try to find okay, how different is Jared Hicks and Joel Falani? How different is Darren Moore and Eric Ward? How different yeah. is you know when you have the the pair? And I think like right now. You're saying that that Caleb Douglas is more your straight line speed guy, whereas Josh Kelly is the more of the the Crabtree, the Ward, the the guy that's going to be over the middle and, and and things like that. So that's kind of the game you're trying to play. But you know, it's it's always um, it's it's always up for discussion, and you try to you know they, they do a lot more cross training than they used to too. Yes, they've all got hands, and that's what they're there for in particular, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the ability to snag it yes. and bring it in. All right, thank you, Roland, for the question. Let's get on to question number two.
First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. And summertime means baseball, burgers, and money in the bank when you're picking a winner with FanDuel. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer by beating the heat with a refreshing parlay. Ah an over-under play, or by getting the money line mojo working. Visit FanDuel.com and make a splash by adding a big win to your summer bucket list with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Let's get on to question number two. This one is from Brush and Hunt 901. Your time of year is just around the corner, buddy. Uh, this question says, aside from the softball player, who do you know of that has commanded the biggest NIL agreement at Tech so far? It's kind of an interesting question also because some of this stuff sometimes is shrouded in some level of secrecy, it seems like. But then there's also, and seemingly more and more every day, some appetite when you really do make a big deal to kind of flaunt it a little bit because you want prospective student-athletes to know uh, what kind of pool you're swimming in as um, a support base or a fan base. Um, so obviously I would assume softball is leading the way with over $1 million for one player. I could be wrong on that. Correct me if I am, but who else do we point to, uh, as far as being near the peak of those NIL agreements at tech so far? Yeah, that is, um, it, it's, it's, you're right. It's it, the, 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 this whole conversation is a bit strange and I think it's changed quite a bit, uh, because it, th there was a time where, okay, we're, we're going to equally get NIL deals to this team or, or whatever. And then I don't know in the last, help me out of here, Cowan, but in the last two or three months, it's like some of these specifically basketball deals nationally, it's like people started popping out the, the dollar figures and, right. and, and, and like the agent involved and, and, and all these things. And I, yeah. I mean, and you, you tell me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think that, and I have zero reason to doubt this. I, I believe it absolutely to be true or close to true. But I mean, I think it was, you know, you, you're, you're, you're over seven figures for JT Toppin uh, for basketball. I think that's just what it took. I think, you know, Kansas state was, what uh, was definitely uh, reported as, is paying big dollars. I think Kansas was, I think, um, oh, who was our guy? Who was our guy that uh, from Utah State that got two million? Um, great, o great Obasor, great, yeah, great Obasor. Yeah. yeah, he got two million. That was widely reported by by national media. Is anybody seeing these agreements? Does it, is anybody have direct knowledge of that? I don't uh, have any idea. I certainly have not. But I think in, in these in terms of this conversation. I think that JT Toppin is the is the one you would single out, and I think that if, if you go even further, I think Taj Brooks, mm -hmm. and again, understandably so in in the market and the way that this stuff has worked. I mean, from a basketball standpoint, this was a draft prospect. He fit your needs to a T. He had been identified as like, man, if we're putting guys that we would love to have on our in our program, he's number one. And I don't think that Grant and you know, Kellen Buffington and all the people involved there ever wavered. And they may, there were maybe days where it didn't look good. And then he commits to Texas and, and then it's NBA and all that, but they just kept, kept sticking with it. And so what did it ultimately take? Don't know. But I, I believe that I, I think those, some of those reports out there, I think are, are, are accurate or close to it anyway. Uh, I have zero reason to doubt that based on, you know, some of the conversations we've had, but again, this is what it, this is what it took. Uh, I don't have any problem with it. I, I am curious how all this changes when we get into revenue sharing and what this what this kind of thing looks like the the big ticket item or the or the player that ends up late in the process that hasn't chosen and people are like this guy or gal can put us over the top, which is what I think Grant thought and Coach Glasgow probably thought about these two additions to their programs. Uh, and, and it, and then you have a guy like Taj who has a decision to make and he can go pro. What would it take for you to come back here as opposed to just taking a chance? And, and he, whatever he got, he absolutely deserved. Okay. Because of who he is, how he played all that stuff. And not everybody would, but this is the market. This is the, the, what, what everybody's argued. Like it's a, 
it's a it's a free market. Everybody's allowed to do what they want. Now, again, this is going to change because of the revenue sharing. But I think that's the I think we've hit the the, the points that needed to be hit there uh, as far as tech athletes. But, yeah, th- this it's been hard to try to follow. And I, I'm uncomfortable talking about that because it's but some have thought that they wish it was more transparent and that, that it was it should be declared and everybody should know what everybody's making and all those things. So who knows where they ultimately land on that. And when we get to revenue sharing, will we know how it's laid out, you know, like an NFL roster uh, yeah. is don't know. Yeah. It's kind of funny how we've acclimated to the conversation because it does seem like at the beginning, again, a lot of secrecy. And just like you say, like, uh, should we even be talking about this? Um, and I don't know yeah. why. I mean, it's a seven-figure deal for an athlete in Lubbock, Texas. Seems newsworthy enough, but it still doesn't quite feel like a professional salary conversation. I have no idea what the difference is other than some feeling <laughs> that it's different. But I think that will continue to progress into the more kind of public approach to talking about it probably as uh, the months and, and years roll on. And yeah, with with Toppin uh, reportedly nearing or exceeding seven figures, he may be number one on the list because I think Nigeri Kennedy, the, the softball player, was like one million fifty thousand and some change or something like that that was reported. Um, so I, I don't know. He may actually be number one on the list. But what I think is really interesting about those two players in particular versus a guy like Taj Brooks, Taj Brooks has done it in your uniform. These haven't. Now, obviously, they were very good in their prior stops and not to dismiss at all what their potential is. But as far as Texas Tech production, it is still just potential. So it's a little bit of a different conversation, I think, as far as, hey, this guy's already done it for us for a number of years here in Lubbock. Um, Now, what does it take for him to continue to do it for another year versus, all right, we're giving somebody a change of scenery. We're bringing a presence into the program that has not been there before. And we're going to go all out monetarily to do that. So kind of some different challenges there. And yeah, it sort of seemed like, um, I I don't know, as things got ramped up. Now, this is not like a university announcement because obviously it's not their deal, quote unquote. But it will be. But yeah, that's true. But you do want the university or the athletics department, at least, to kind of get the benefit of the PR, right? Like, hey, we just gave somebody a million dollars to play softball. So there's sort of like a kind of a middle ground, I guess, that we're playing in, in a way where there's some of that mystery to it. But also, if you got it, better flaunt it, as the philosopher Tupac said once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, and and, and your, your your softball deal, like, I, I was stunned at how widely reported that was, just yeah. from all parts. Wasn't a big secret. I don't know who is making that information available on what, side of the deal that is uh i could see where there's benefit to either side saying yeah this is what happened or i could see there's also benefit to either side going i don't want to be the one that told everybody too who who knows what's funny about this conversation is and we're talking about how awkward it is i i I always find it interesting how we try to tiptoe around it and yet you know there's message boards like redwatersports.com and other sites like this uh, and, and out there in the college space where, like, say, I never publicly talked about in a show like this or anything like that two or three years ago, whenever they really went in all, it was the bad basketball year. It was two years ago, I guess it was. And the payroll for that one was so widely speculated about, about the dollar figures that some of those guys were making. And it's like everybody knew. There's so many people that that knew and talked about it and posted about it and all these things. And, and yet, so it's, it's kind of funny that we're sitting here trying to talk about how we feel awkward about talking about because other people don't, (laughs) you know, like, you know, I, I, so that, that part is always uh, interesting to me. The thing about a softball pitcher and a, a a forward that has got the skill set of JT Toppin compared to like a Taj Brooks, this is what you're going to start getting into when you start having to determine who gets what is positional value Mm -hmm. because I mean, there's just Taj got what he got, I would guess because of who he is and what he's done. Right. And, and deservedly so. However, if you know, he can't have the impact in a program and on a team in the sport that he plays like a softball pitcher or a a very talented forward that can do all the things that JT Toppin can. Yeah. One of five guys on the floor. 
Yeah. Yep. Or, or or a pitcher that's got the ball in his hand or her hands that can pitch pretty much every game every day, and is yeah. arguably the best one in the country. <laughs> so that that's what is. Hey, man, this is what the market dictates. And so but you're going to have to get into that with a lot of these sports and a lot of these players and positions that they play and all that and kind of determine. Uh, because I think Texas Tech and, and many folks had their player personnel people in Nashville this week, meeting with a lot of NFL folks and meeting with capologists and general manager types. One, networking opportunity, but two, how do y'all do this? How, how exactly <laughs> how, how exactly do you determine, okay, we've got this dollar figure. How do we how do we divvy up these pieces of the pie? Because it's not like when you go to grandma's and have butter chest pie, everybody gets equal slice and that <laughs> knife comes out. I mean, there's going to be, well, you, you get a sliver, you get half the pie. I mean, th- right. this is how this is deal is going to work. And I'm, I'm intrigued by how those decisions are made. And is it the same at Texas tech as it is at Oklahoma state uh, at, at Ohio state and on and on it goes. But um, yeah, Taj got a big piece of the pie, I would guess compared to, the football pie and he deserved it but it's yeah. not as big of a piece of pie as jt Tuffin got i bet now what's this thing i hear about excel can you tell me something about an excel <laughs> spreadsheet um yeah and to those because i see these comments all the time to those who are so concerned about oh what impact does it have on the teammates what's it going to do for the locker room if you are a teammate that is adversely affected by another teammate getting something that's a player of that kind of caliber we're describing then i don't want you in a locker room anyway and I really think that is a almost a totally fan-based conversation uh, to assume that teammates have so much beef. I think most of the teammates are excited for these guys and like, man, I'd, I'd like to do what I can to get some of that. But in the meantime, I'm really excited uh, that my buddy's getting some of that. So I, I, I don't worry about that hardly at all. Again, if it becomes a problem, then it's a problem with that player. And it's a problem the coach has to handle and the program has to handle. And it may be handled by saying sayonara. Uh, We want those who are committed to a cause bigger than themselves, which may include a running back or a pitcher or a forward or whatever, who is treated differently. And I'm trying to figure out what that reminds me of. Oh, life. Not everybody gets everything equally. So I think that part gets a little bit overblown. Uh, Chris, appreciate the insight, man. And thanks to those who submitted those questions. Keep them coming. Appreciate you guys for mixing it up there in the YouTube comment section on the reg. One of the best ways to help us grow the show. So uh, continue to comment anything below chris thanks for some bonus time man absolutely man i appreciate it enjoyed it thank you for the comments and questions keep them coming we will always do our best to do one of these shows each week and uh uh, have a good weekend and uh, we'll talk to you next time that's right another saturday about to come to pass with no college football and that means just a few more until college football is back baby for chris i'm casey thanks for being out there and we hope to see you back for the next round on locked on texas tech